what if nuclear energy could run on waste we already have? Or if one company didn't just design reactors, but actually owned them, operated them, and even sold the power just like a utility? And then the biggest question of all, is this all real momentum or is this company just buying time? Because this is what the entire story comes down to. Today, I'm talking about Oclo. This is a company that's promising clean, dependable nuclear power fueled by recycled nuclear waste backed by the US government and it's already got lined up massive customers like data centers and federal agencies. But there's a reality here. There's not one reactor that's online yet. Revenue, still zero. Losses, growing. And today, I'm going to be walking through exactly what this company, Oclo, is building. What just got approved, what the financials really say, and whether this is the kind of long-term opportunity that rewards patience or punishes it. Hey, what's up? If you're new to the channel, my name is Rick Orford. I've been trading since 1999, and no, I'm not a financial advisor. That is a good thing. I break down the numbers so retail investors like us can make smarter, more confident decisions with our money. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. And you all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by almost six times. Go to fool.com slash Rico to get your 10 stock picks right now. Oclo is a nuclear energy company that's headquartered in Santa Clara, California. Now, instead of following the traditional model where reactor companies only design and license their systems, Oclo builds, owns, and operates its own reactors. And that's a big shift because the model is built around long-term power purchase agreements or PPAs, which create recurring revenue while pushing project risk and responsibility directly onto Oclo. Now, at the center of all this strategy is the Aurora Powerhouse. The Aurora is a small, fast fission reactor that's designed to deliver up to 15 megawatts of dependable, carbon-free power. And what makes it different, though, is the fuel. It can run on recycled nuclear waste tapping into energy that conventional reactors just leave behind. As demand for clean, reliable power rises, Oclo's lined up agreements across utilities and data centers, industry, and even government. And the company is targeting its first Aurora powerhouse deployment by late 2027 or early 2028. At the same time, Oclo plans to recycle spent nuclear fuel through its Aurora fuel fabrication facility. And the goal is to turn largely unused nuclear waste into secure, long-term energy. And this vision was compelling enough to earn special clearance from the U.S. Department of Energy. And that clearance allows Oclo to access the nation's entire stockpile of used nuclear fuel. This is a resource that could power the United States for the next 150 years. And that fuel recycling plan just took another major step forward. Just on December 16th, the U.S. Department of Energy approved Oclo's preliminary safety analysis for its Aurora fuel fabrication facility at Idaho National Laboratory. And this approval clears the start of assembly. It also is the first approval under the DOE fuel line pilot program. More importantly, it advances a faster authorization path towards fabricating recycled fuel for Oclo's first commercial Aurora powerhouse. Oclo also released its third quarter financials in November. The company posted an operating loss of about 36 million, or roughly 200% higher than the same quarter last year. Now, management pointed to heavier R&D spending along with higher general and admin costs as the main drivers. On the balance sheet side of things, Okla reported $1.2 billion in cash and marketable securities. 
of that, 526 million came from its previously successful at the market program. However, net losses increased about 200% to roughly 30 million, and that was about 20 cents per share. So this brings us to the real question. Is all of this success translating into re real momentum, or is it just buying time for the company? This exact question came up in my Discord, so let's break down the catalysts and the risks that could move the stock in the future. Now, Oculus' core catalyst, of course, is its build, own, and operate model for smaller nuclear plants. And this setup allows Oculus to sell power directly to their customers, making deployments repeatable over time. It also makes competition extremely difficult. I mean, to compete at this level, others would need regulatory approval for advanced reactors, reliable access to specialized fuel, and significant upfront capital all at the same time. Now, most nuclear companies only manage one, maybe two of those. And beyond its reactor and recycling technology, Oklo is also positioned to benefit from federal support, regulatory progress, strategic partnerships, and of course, their growing project pipeline. And one of Oklo's biggest future drivers for their work is with the US government. Oklo, along with its subsidiary, Atomic Alchemy, was selected for three projects under the DOE's Reactor Pilot Program. Now, these projects help accelerate deployment timelines, and they provide real-world operational data that's needed for future licensing. On September 22nd, Oklo officially broke ground on its first Aurora powerhouse at the Idaho National Laboratory, all under this program. And this is the first of three projects that were awarded by the DOE. That same month, Oklo announced plans to develop a fuel recycling facility in Tennessee. And this is just the first phase of an advanced fuel center with planned investment of up to $1.68 billion. It's the first privately funded facility of its kind in the States designed to supply fuel for Oklo's Aurora powerhouses. And production is expected to begin in the early 2030s. Then in November, Oklo announced a binding contract with Siemens Energy. This agreement accelerates the power conversion system for the first Aurora powerhouse. Siemens can now move forward with detailed engineering, design, and early manufacturing of long lead components. And this will help Oklo maintain momentum towards deployment. And then, of course, there's their deals, right? I mean, Oklo signed an agreement with Equinix to buy 500 megawatts of power from Aurora powerhouses. But if you think that's a lot, Switch, a major hyperscaler data center operator, they also just signed a non-binding master power agreement with Oklo, forget this, 12 gigawatts of energy. Under the framework, Oklo's Aurora powerhouses would supply energy to Switch facilities nationwide through a series of power purchase agreements. Altogether, these deals just prove how the strong demand or how there's so much strong demand for Oklo's reactors and fuel recycling technology across both government and commercial customers. I mean, the upside story is clear here, right? Of course, at the same time, risks, they also matter just as much. For Oklo, everything, it comes down to timing. When did the Aurora powerhouses actually get delivered and turned on? I mean, right now, they haven't even delivered one single Aurora powerhouse. Even the first project isn't expected to come online until, well, late 2027 or early 2028. Nuclear development, of course, is rarely simple. Regulatory scrutiny, technical challenges, and construction delays, of course, can easily push timelines further out. And these risks get amplified because Oklo is still pre-revenue. I mean, quarter after quarter, the company reports no sales rising expenses, and limited visibility on when meaningful revenue will begin, if ever. Another concern I have is dilution, right? I mean, much of Oklo's asset growth has come from issuing new shares to raise cash. Just on December 4th, Oklo disclosed a new at-the-money equity agreement that allows it to issue up to $1.5 billion of Class A shares. Now, for current investors, what does that mean? It means dilution. Every new share reduces existing ownership. And this approach does provide short-term funding, but it's not sustainable forever. And many of these challenges are very typical, yes, for early-stage energy companies. But the real risk here 
is concentration. Oculus' future depends on heavily on successfully launching its Aurora powerhouse. If execution slips, well, momentum and investor confidence, it's going to fade quickly. So let's talk about the stock, right? Because that's probably why you're here. Oculus currently trades around $81. That translates to a market cap of about $12.7 billion. The 60-month beta on the stock is 0.73, which means historically the stock has been less volatile than the broader market. It tends to move about 27% less than the S&P 500, which can mean potentially smaller swings and potentially less downside during broad market sell-offs. Over the last month, though, the stock is down about 9%, but zooming out the changes, you know, you can see year-to-date, Oculus up 283%. Over the last 52 weeks, it's also been up 244%. Also, a consensus among 19 analysts rate Oculus stock a moderate buy. That rating has remained unchanged over the last three months, and the average score is 3.95. But get this, it's ticked up slightly higher. The consensus includes a high target price of $175, which suggests the stock could double in 2026. And well, I kind of have to agree, right? I mean, Oculus got some real government support, they've got real demand, and there's some real progress on the Aurora platform, but this isn't a smooth ride. Timelines are long, losses are growing, and dilution is a real risk. The upside, though, is very exciting, but this is a stock for patient investors who think in years, not in days or months, and they can handle volatility along the way. Now, I want to hear from you. Is Oclo a buy, hold, or sell at these levels? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps others find the video, it supports the channel, and make sure you don't miss out on my deep dive or my next one. Well, that's it for me today. I wanted to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.